everyone. So this week's topic is all about the rainforest and I wonder how much you already know about it. How much do you know about the plants and the animals that live there? Do you know where rainforests are found? What I want to do is share with you this week this wonderful book. It's called The Great, the Great Kapok Tree and it's written by Lynn Cherry and it says it's a tale of the Amazon rainforest which is just one of the rainforests in the world. If I open it up, on the first page is this amazing map, and we'll have a look at the map in a minute. But first of all, I want to show you the pictures of just some of the animals that live in the rainforest around the edge. You've got the emerald tree boa, you've got the scarlet macaw, toucans, tree frogs, jaguars, anteaters, boa constrictors, butterflies, parakeets, porcupines, sloths, amazing animals and actually really amazing pictures too um, and that's one of the reasons I love this book so much. At the side we've got the layers of the rainforest and it shows which animals live in each layer. You might have found out a little bit about this already in your learning and then in the middle we've got this map and this map's fantastic because it shows us where we are in the United Kingdom living in England here but if we have a look at the map's key it shows us in green where rainforests can be found in the world and if we have a little look closer at the map's key you can see that there's two different colours of green the darker green says today's rainforests. So if we have a look at the dark green areas on the map, it's saying this is where rainforests are found today. The lighter green says original extent of rainforest. So this is where the first rainforests were or where the rainforests used to be. Now, if we have a little look closer, you can see that in South America, in Africa, in Australia, in India. Where there was rainforest in the lighter green, it's not there anymore. It's disappeared. It's gone. It's vanished. Can anybody think why that might be? Why are the rainforests getting smaller? Why are rainforests disappearing? Well, it's down to something called deforestation. And deforestation is about, it means, when rainforests are cut down. Now, there's different reasons for this. Um, one reason is for logging, so that they use the tree trunks of the trees in the rainforests uh, to make things like wood, like paper. Another reason is um, for arable land, for farmers. So farmers have more land to be able to grow crops. There's lots more reasons too, but they're just two of the main ones. The problem though, is that by cutting the trees down, by deforestation, it is causing a real problem to the animals and the plants that live there. And the author, Lynn Cherry, wrote this book to try and make people aware of the impact of deforestation on the rainforests. So I'm going to share the story with you. It starts by saying, in the Amazon rainforest, it is always hot. And in that heat, everything grows and grows and grows. The tops of the trees in the rainforest are called the canopy. The canopy is a sunny place that touches the sky. The animals that live there light lots of light. Colourful parrots fly from tree to tree. Monkeys leap from branch to branch. The bottom of the rainforest is called the understory. The animals that live in the understory like darkness. There, silent snakes curl around hanging vines. Graceful jaguars watch and wait. And in this steamy environment, the great kapok tree shoots up through the forest and emerges above the canopy. This is the story of a community of animals that live in one such tree in the rainforest. And like I said to you before, make sure you have a look at the lovely pictures. They're really, really stunning. Two men walked into the rainforest. 
Moments before, the forest had been alive with the sounds of squawking birds and howling monkeys. Now all was quiet as the creatures watched the two men and wondered why they had come. The larger man stopped and pointed to a great kapok tree. Which is here, you can see a boa constrictor on it. Then he left. The smaller man took the axe he carried and struck the trunk of the tree. Whack! 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 The sounds of the blows rang through the forest. The wood of the tree was very hard. Chop! 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 The man wiped the sweat that ran down his face and neck. Whack! Chop! Whack! Chop! Soon the man grew tired. He sat down to rest at the foot of the great kapok tree. Before he knew it, the heat and hum of the forest had lulled him to sleep. So you can see he's getting really, really tired trying to cut the great kapok tree down. But you can also see some peep animals have come to join him. I wonder what they might do. A boa constrictor lived in the kapok tree. He slithered down its trunk to where the man was sleeping. He looked at the gash that the axe had made in the tree. Then the huge snake slid very close to the man and hissed in his ear. Senor, this tree is a tree of miracles. It's my home, where generations of my ancestors have lived. Do not chop it down. A bee buzzed in the sleeping man's ear. Senor, my hive is, is, in, is in this kapok tree, and I fly from tree to tree and flower to flower, collecting pollen. In this way, I pollinate the trees and flowers throughout the rainforest. You see, all living things depend on one another. So we can see the insects and the butterflies come to plead with him to keep the kapok tree safe. A troop of monkeys scampered down from the canopy of the kapok tree. They chatted to the sleeping man. Senor, we have seen the ways of man. You chop down one tree, then come back for another and another. The roots of these great trees will wither and die and there will be nothing left to hold the earth in place. When the heavy rains come, the soil will be washed away and the forest will become a desert. A toucan, a macaw and a cock of the rock flew down from the canopy. Senor, squawked the toucan, you must not cut down this tree. We have flown over the rainforest and seen what happens once you begin to chop down the trees. Many people settle on the land. They set fires to clear the underbush and soon the forest disappears. Where once there was life and beauty, only black and smouldering ruins remain. A bright and small tree frog crawled along the edge of a leaf. In a squeaky voice, he piped in the man's ear. Senor, a ruined rainforest means ruined lives, many ruined lives. You will leave many of us homeless if you chop down this great kapok tree. A jaguar had been sleeping along a branch in the middle of the tree. Because his spotted coat blended into the dappled light and shadows of the understory, no one had noticed him. Now he leapt down and padded silently over to the sleeping man. He growled in his ear, Senor, the kapok tree is home to many birds and animals. If you cut it down, where will I find my dinner? Four tree porcupines swung down from branch to branch and whispered to the man, Senor, do you know what we animals and humans need in order to live? Oxygen. And Senor, do you know what trees produce? Oxygen. If you cut down the forests, you will destroy that which gives us all life. Several anteaters climbed down the kapok tree with their young clinging to their back. The unstriped anteater said to the sleeping man, Senor, you are chopping down this tree with no thought for the future, and surely you know that what happens tomorrow depends upon what you do today. The big man tells you to chop down a beautiful tree. He does not think of his own children, who tomorrow must live in a world without trees. A 
three-toed sloth had begun climbing down from the canopy when the men first appeared. Only now did she reach the ground. Plodding ever so slowly over to the sleeping man, she spoke in her deep and lazy voice. Senor, how much is beauty worth? Can you live without it? If you destroy the beauty of the rainforest, on what would you feast your eyes? A child from the Yanomomo tribe who lived in the rainforest knelt over the sleeping man. He murmured in his ear, Senor, when you awake, please look upon us all with new eyes. The man awoke with a start. Before him stood the rainforest child and all around him were the creatures who depended upon the great kapok tree. What wondrous and rare animals they were. The man looked about and saw the sun streaming through the canopy. Spots of bright light glowed like jewels amidst the dark green forest. Strange and beautiful plants seemed to dangle in the air, suspended from the great kapok tree. The man smelled the fragrant perfume of their flowers. He felt the steamy mist rising from the forest floor, but he heard no sound, for the creatures were strangely silent. I wonder what he's thinking. I wonder if he'd listen to all the animals trying to give him their message to save the kapok tree. The man stood and picked up his axe. He swung back his arm as though to strike the tree. Suddenly he stopped. He turned and looked at the animals and the child. I wonder what he'll do. He hesitated, then he dropped the axe and walked out of the rainforest. Now the author has written a note that says, Dear readers, I wrote the great pop tree to let the world know what happens to the rainforest creatures and to the entire planet when rainforests are destroyed. I hope that after reading this book, you will help save the rainforests. Please care for Mother Earth. Together we can make a difference. And I'd found out some facts about deforestation from the rainforest. The first one says, it is estimated that if things continue as they are, chopping down rainforests, in a hundred years time, there will be no rainforests left. Another fact, one and a half acres of rainforest is cut down every second. And that is the same as losing 20 football pitches of rainforest every minute. Third fact, 28,000 species of animal will be expected to become extinct if deforestation continues. I hope you really enjoyed the book. And just before we finish, there are ways we can help save the rainforests too. I talked a little bit about um, the need for logging um, and that's why they're cutting down the trees. If we buy things that have less packaging, that don't need as much paper, and we're making sure that we recycle our paper so we're not wasting it, then that stops the demand for wood that make paper and packaging and that is one way we can help to save the rainforest. I hope you have a really, really good week and I'll see you soon. Bye.